Okay, great. So just for um, the presentation today, what we'll do is save all the questions until the end. So if you want to just mute yourself during the presentation and then at the end, I'll take questions either through the chat or you know, you can open it up through your mic, whatever works for you. Alrighty. So many of us know about the three R's of sustainability, reduce, reuse, recycle. And today we'll be mainly going through those and kind of talking about the hierarchy of reduce is the first thing we should do, then reuse, and the last option should be recycling. Now, although we're only talking about these three today, there are many, many uh, R's of sustainability. And so this presentation will be linked onto our Dunedin Green Scene page. So you can go in and read more about rethink, refuse, reduce, reuse, repurpose, recycle, rot, and all of those. So we'll start at the bottom at recycling and then work our way up through reuse and reduce. A little bit about the state of recycling. I know a lot of people hear different things about the recycling uh, industry and what's happening. And so basically a little update. So since the 1960s, recycling has been growing. It's a steady market that's gone up. We've seen an increase in recycling, but also an increase in the amount of products that we are creating. And a lot of these products were actually being sent over to China and other Asian countries to be processed. Now, for a long time, I think the majority of it wasn't the best quality. And so they were also finding a lot of issues with contamination in China and, you know, destroying their machinery, things like that. So in 2018, they came up with a policy and it basically said um, they wouldn't accept any material unless it had a contamination rate of 0.5% or lower, which is pretty much unheard of. And so a lot of programs um, just either dropped, they either stopped because it was too expensive or they didn't know where to send their materials. And so you can see in this chart, all of the you know, commodity prices just dropping. And so where recycling was once a very vibrant market, making a lot of money, it then became a huge expense for a lot of cities and schools and other programs. So right now, um, it's kind of in the process of different domestic markets shifting and slowly growing back to capacity. Uh, the public sector, private sector, and nonprofits are collaborating, which is really great to see that we're all trying to stay on the same page and help the market continue to grow. Some recycling programs have had to end and some have had to change what they can accept. And then others are actually revamping with more education. And this education is on contamination as well as zero waste and just trying to reduce overall waste streams. But again, it does take time. So it's just a slow process to work our way back up. Here in Dunedin, we have a recycling program mixed. So everything goes into the same bin and it's the same items accepted that are, you know, your blue recycling bin you put out to the curb. And the same thing is, you know, at our drop-off sites. So we have two drop-off sites for recycling. Uh, both are open pretty much 24-7. The site at Lake Haven has a few other components. So we also do cooking oil recycling in our separate green bin. We do a clothing, shoes, and other textile recycling program. You can drop off there. And then we also do free mulch pickup through the county's program. And then at the Ed Eckert site near our community pool, we have the mixed recycling bin as well as our clothing and shoe drop box. So you can find all of that information online um, and check those sites out as well. Where does our recycling go in Dunedin? Um, I've heard stories of recycling plants uh, or recycling programs taking their materials to a landfill or an incinerator. And I can't speak to those programs. They might be doing that. But here in Dunedin, we are recycling our materials. Everything is taken down to a sorting plant in Sarasota. It's called a MRF or a materials recovery facility. And from there, everything is sorted, baled, and then sold into market. 
From there, it goes into pretty much domestic markets and a lot of our materials are bought, processed, and actually recycled in Alabama and Georgia. So I think it's better to see, you know, more of a domestic program, a regional program, which will, is what we have going on here, instead of our materials being sold all the way over to China and other countries where it takes a lot of greenhouse gases just to get the material over there. And so what can be recycled in our program? Um, just really a few basic items. In Dunedin, we are updating, we updated our um, flyer that you can see here on the screen. And we're trying to get residents to think of not necessarily what materials are recyclable and instead what items are recyclable. I hear people say, oh, well, plastic's recyclable, metal, paper, glass. You know, there are some plastics that are recyclable, but there's many that are not. Same thing with the other materials. Just because it's metal, just because it's glass, or just because it's paper doesn't mean it can go in our program. So we kind of did this flyer is the same materials, just what items can we accept and what are the common issues that we're seeing. So I'll deep kind of go more into that um, and along with our contamination. But some of the big things that we don't want to see would be paper plates, paper towels, um, pretty much any plastic outside of a plastic beverage container or laundry detergent or berry basket. Um, and you can kind of see on the, the paper side, we just want newspaper, cardboard, mail is fine, um, office paper, those types of things, making sure they're clean and dry, and then bottles and jars for glass, and then metal and aluminum cans. We are also updating our recycling site. So if you go to dunedingov.com slash recycling, let me click on this link, see if it will take us there. Can everyone still see my screen? Perfect, thank you. So you can actually hop in, it's interactive, room by room, and you can go to each little area in the house. So say you click on the kitchen, and it will take you to a list of items that are recyclable and that are not. So you can go on here. Did the screen change? It didn't change? All right, let me see if I can do this. I'll stop my share and try it this way. All right, maybe we're back. So you go into the kitchen and it will show you the items that are recyclable. It will give you more information. You can click on each item. And then if you scroll down, you can see all the items on the no list and reasons why they're not accepted or other areas that you can take them to be processed. And it does that for all the different rooms in the house. So that's a really great resource. We encourage you to use it. If you have questions, try to find it there or give us a call. And we're always happy to help. And let me go back to presentation. Alrighty. So when you're in doubt, when you're not sure if something is recyclable, it's actually better to throw it out in the garbage instead of thinking, oh, well, you know, it is plastic, it is uh, glass. I think they could maybe recycle it down the line. What actually happens is it causes a lot of issues in our recycling sorting plants. And so we encourage you to just put it in the garbage if you're not sure. Um, if you think that it's hazardous, if it's paint, chemicals, electronics, don't put it in the garbage, don't put it in the recycling, call us, and we'll kind of guide you towards the county's hazardous program, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And I did want to share, so all of our garbage in Dunedin goes to the Waste to Energy facility in St. Petersburg, it's run by the county and everything is burned. So they burn all of our garbage, it's turned into electricity. They run their operations and power like 35,000 homes every day through our garbage. Um, by burning it, the end product is basically ash, and so they reduce the amount of space needed for a landfill by 
So that's kind of what's happening with our garbage here in Pinellas. And to the holiday section, we have a few different flyers we've been posting um, in the newspaper as well as our online Facebook site through the City of Dunedin government page talking about the nice list and naughty list for Christmas of what you should be putting in the bin and what should be left out. So we'll go more into that. Here's another one you might see floating around, nice and naughty list. And making sure we're not getting tangled up in the holidays, that we are keeping those Christmas lights out and other things. And then we also have another um, education campaign going on called Dunedin Recycling in the Know. So we'll pick out one item that's contamination and kind of do a write-up. And I have the link here at the bottom, which you'll be able to get once I post it. And you can go and read ways to either reduce or reuse that item um, and how to make sure to not put it in your recycling bin. So Christmas contamination. Here's a lot of things that we see around the holidays that we don't want to see in the blue recycling bin. So basically any Christmas decorations, garland, ornaments, tinsels, bows, ribbons, Christmas lights, all of that should be reused. Um, if it's broken or there's something wrong and you need to dispose of it, put it in your garbage. Um, Christmas trees, whether they're real or fake, we don't want to see them in the recycling bin. We can't accept them. And then for Christmas cards, it's kind of either way. If Christmas cards have a lot of glitter and other items, bows, and kind of pop-outs, put those in your garbage. If it's just a really plain, basic paper card, that can be recycled. Same thing with the um, Christmas wrapping paper. So if it's a really shiny paper, that needs to go in the garbage. If it's very basic, matte, plain paper, that can be recycled. So you have all your Christmas gifts. They're wrapped, wrapping paper, bows, all of the above. Once those get opened and everything pops out of there, you've got um, maybe wrapping paper, ribbons, plastic packaging, styrofoam packaging, all of that needs to go in the garbage. Um, even, you know, the toy. I've heard a lot of people try to recycle toys. Uh, toys are not recyclable in our program. Those do need to go in the garbage. And another thing to note is sometimes you'll see the recycling symbol on these items. Like you can see on this little packing pillow, there's a recycling symbol right there. It's not recyclable or accepted in our program. So I'll talk about that and, you know, just because it has the recycling symbol on it doesn't mean we can take it. Some other things you might see around the holidays, um, pretty much any to-go cup cannot be taken, whether it's plastic, styrofoam, or paper that needs to go in the garbage. Uh, styrofoam plates, plastic plates, paper plates, plastic bags or bagged recycling cannot be accepted. And then plastic wrap that you might see around your food or other things that you're buying, and then batteries. So batteries like the ones you see here are your basic AA, AAA, D, and C. These no longer contain mercury and can go in your garbage. Um, what is hazardous is the rechargeable batteries. So something from your phone or if you have a rechargeable battery for your vacuum, something like that is hazardous and that needs to go to the county. The main reason we are focusing on these items is because they become entangled in the machinery at the sorting plant. So anything that can become entangled, we call it a tangler. That can be cords, wires, plastic bags, clothing. During the holidays, that's your Christmas lights, wrapping paper, uh, like the shiny wrapping paper, um, tinsel, all of these things can either get stuck or entangled in the machinery and those need to be left out. It's for a few different reasons. So when they get entangled in the machinery, it will clog and jam um, the operations. So it's very time consuming because it shuts down the whole plant. It usually takes a few hours for them to manually cut everything out of the, the sorting plant. Um, it can also be very cost effective, you know, cost prohibitive. I've seen other cities where 
one little piece of, I don't know, like a plastic bag or something got entangled in a piece of machinery and it cost them $10,000 to fix. So, you know, one small thing like that, we want to make sure, you know, you might not think a plastic bag is such a big deal, but it does cause a lot of issues. The main reason why we are focusing on these things is because of worker safety. So the garbage and recycling industry is one of the top five most dangerous jobs to work in in the United States. You know, leading uh, in that top dangerous list. So our main focus is worker safety. And any way we can eliminate, you know, a hazardous situation of them having to climb into the machinery and cut out all of the contaminants is what we're focused on. Here you can see on the right hand side the machinery clean and what it should look like and on the left hand side is the reality uh, it's entangled and causing a lot of issues. I also posted a little picture in the top right corner of a recyclable bag. I've seen those in the stores um, that's not something we accept. You know, we can't accept any recyclables in a bag, whether it's paper, plastic, anything. So I have talked to some local grocers and asked them to remove that item from their store because it's something that causes a lot of issues in our uh, industry. And for the most part, I think they're listening. So if you see that on the shelf, go up to the grocer and ask them to stop carrying it. Grab a little water. So another thing we're seeing right now is personal protective equipment during uh, the pandemic, making sure none of that gets in the recycling bin um, and it is disposed of properly. Yard debris is a big one and I'm not really sure why, maybe because people think it's a natural item. Um, there are yard debris recycling programs. Just because there are programs in some way in some sort doesn't mean everything goes into that blue bin. So if you do have yard debris, make sure it's going um, either in a personal 32 gallon container. Uh, you're either bagging it or bundling it. That's gonna be picked up by a third crew and they take it to an aggregate recycling facility. So it is getting processed in a different way, um, but it doesn't go along with what's in the blue bin. Here's a few pictures from Dunedin residents. You can see wood, yard debris, cushions. Uh, someone put a fish tank in there. You can't accept that. And then you can also see the little green tags on the bins. So if we see obvious contamination, we're gonna give you a little green tag. It's, just, it's gonna say call the office and we will try to work with you on either removing the contaminant or helping you to recycle right. Here's a fun one. They have uh, an entire mattress. I don't know how they fit it in the bin. And then you can see their neighbor right next door has a huge wicker chair. So again, items we can accept, um, making sure we're sticking to those basic items. And the tagging program, I've begun to map it out. And you can see on the map, we still have a pretty big uh, contamination issue in Dunedin. And so we're continuing our um, efforts through education because every little one of those blue dots is a house that was tagged for contamination. So tell your neighbors, tell your friends how to recycle right. If your recycling sticker on your bin looks like this on the left hand side, it's deteriorating, you can't read it, call us up and we will get you a new uh, recycling sticker much cleaner that you can read and it's up to date. A few recycling tips would be to keep it simple. Again, stick to those really basic items. People will ask me, well, why don't you accept more items? And that's because we only have the capacity, the equipment can only handle these few items. Um, majority of cost and time and efforts is focused on all the contaminants that come into the recycling facility. So when we see less of that or no contamination, they can stop focusing their efforts and funds on fighting contamination and maybe getting better equipment to handle more items. So this may not be the end all be all uh, list. 
you know, hopefully it will grow and markets will grow over time. But for right now, we just really want to keep it simple and clean. Recycling tip number two is nothing smaller than your fist. I know we all have different fist sizes, so you can think of like a hockey puck, maybe around that size. Um, anything like shredded paper, K cups, yogurt cups, caps. If you do have a cap, either twist it on tight to the container or remove it completely. Either way is fine. Shredded paper, um, we can't accept it. If it's in a paper bag, if it's in a plastic bag, it doesn't work. So put that in your garbage. Um, and then a good way to, for like the yogurt containers, I try to get like the bigger yogurt containers because that is recyclable instead of all those little small individual ones. Tip number three would be to not rely on the recycling symbol. Right now, the symbol is not really regulated enough as it should be. And so many manufacturers just stamp that little symbol on and it doesn't mean we can take it. So right here, you can see like a number six on a styrofoam cup. There's a little recycling on a packaging pillow and a lot of plastic bags have that recycling sticker. So we wanna make sure those are not getting in our bin. Um, the best thing to do is just focus on that list of items that we can accept and be weary when you see the recycling symbol. The recycling symbol can mean that it was made out of recyclable materials, that it's recyclable in some program. For example, plastic bags can be taken to your local grocer and dropped off in front of the store, um, but they can't be accepted in our blue bin. So just making sure you know the differences um, and not relying on that symbol. Tip number four would be to keep things clean, dry, and loose. So if you, you know, rinse out your items, if it's too difficult and it's not getting clean within one rinse, such as like a peanut butter jar, it doesn't make environmental sense to use gallons and gallons and gallons of water to wash it out. Instead, put it in the garbage. Um, those items that you are rinsing out, they're gonna be a little bit wet. Just place them to the side to dry and then put them in your bin. If fiber materials such as paper, uh, newspaper, or cardboard get really wet, they can't be recycled. And because we have a mixed recycling program, we wanna make sure things are dry. And then finally, keeping things loose. Again, nothing um, in a bag can be recycled. So there's crew members at the beginning of the recycling plant, and if they see a bag coming down the line and they can grab it in time, they're gonna grab it and throw it in the garbage. Um, because it would just get entangled in all the machinery. So making sure everything is loose, whether you're putting it in your blue bin or at the drop-off sites. And then um, rechargeable batteries and electronics. So again, this is another thing for worker safety. Any type of hazardous material cannot go in a recycling bin or a garbage bin. What happens is recycling and garbage bins, uh, trucks, sorry, they will compact the material so they can get more material through their route. But when they compact it, and say there's a phone in there, it can ignite and light the whole truck on fire. Um, you know, it could, they've had fires at the, uh, the incinerator, the burn plant, on the tipping floor, which is not where you wanna have a fire. And they've also had it in the sorting plant for the recycling facility. So if you do have hazardous material, take it through the county's program. They have a free program for residents. It's really great. They'll take any hazardous material, electronics, paint, chemicals. Um, they're open Monday through Saturday in St. Petersburg. And they also do a once a month mobile collection in Clearwater. The next one is Saturday, December 19th. And it's at their North County satellite site. You're gonna go put everything in the rear of your vehicle and they'll take it out for you so they can maintain social distancing. Um, and it has their phone number there as well. So all of that will be linked in the presentation that you can get afterwards. And our other recycling programs I mentioned earlier for the clothing and textiles and the cooking oil. You know, there's a lot of things that can be recycled. Doesn't mean they can go in the blue bin. Usually they have different 
programs to go through. So if you have clothes, shoes, purses, belts, other textiles, you can drop them off at our drop-off sites. Uh, they go to a site in Clearwater where if they're still able to be used, they'll be donated. Otherwise, uh, they will actually be recycled for the fabric and the material. And then the cooking oil, don't put that in your blue bin. Bring it to our drop-off site and dump it in the cooking oil recycling bin. So we've talked about a lot about recycling and now we'll move into reuse, which is the next best option for us. So before you're disposing of something either in the garbage or the recycling, think about how can I reuse this item? Could it be used for a craft or storage, uh, cleaning, decorating, maybe a toy for a kid? So there's lots of options. Um, there's so many ideas that you can find online or by asking friends and family members. For Christmas season, uh, you know, save your Christmas decorations or your packaging. A lot of gift bags can be reused year after year. I don't know if your family likes to rip open wrapping paper or if they go really slow so they can save it year after year. Um, you know, you could do that as well. And then also thinking of different ways to wrap your gifts. Maybe you're using uh, newspaper. Maybe you're using brown paper that can be recycled. Um, there is a Japanese tradition of wrapping gifts in fabric or scarves. And um, I think that's become much more popular in the past few years here in the United States. Uh, just different ways you can think about the holidays. And reuse can come in different forms. So I'm even talking about reusing your food scraps. If you take a lot of different food scraps, you can actually regrow them by placing them in a little dish of water. For example, romaine lettuce, you have the bottom, instead of throwing it away or maybe composting it just yet, put it in a little dish of water and it will regrow back up and you can eat it again. It's a really fun project to do right on your windowsill in your kitchen. And then also saving vegetable scraps to make broth, which is really great to have around this holiday season as well. Now, a big reason um, I put this in here is because reducing our food waste is the third most important action we can take in fighting climate change. And so thinking beyond, uh, you know, recycling, we can reuse and try to garden more and uh, save our food scraps. Here's some other fun ways to reuse and upcycle items. Lots of fun ideas. They took a ladder in the left-hand corner and turned it into a bookshelf. In that middle bottom picture, they even took a bathroom tub and turned it into their living room couch. So there's, you know, endless opportunities for your items. And again, asking that question of how can I reuse this before disposing of it? And finally, reduce. So the Environmental Protection Agency believes uh, or has on average Americans produce 5.91 pounds of garbage per day. Here in Pinellas County, we're about double that with 12.16 pounds of garbage. And you know, this is a reason why recycling isn't going to fix our environmental problem. We need to re be reducing the amount of materials that we buy and throw away. And this picture here is actually at the St. Petersburg County site. This is where all of our garbage goes. And you can see this huge pile um, at the tipping floor. That is just the tip of the iceberg. It actually goes down 30 feet below. That's just the tip. So, you know, you can either put this in the chat or you can open up your microphone. How many days worth of garbage do you think that picture is and notice? That picture and then 30 feet below. I'll give it a minute if anyone wants to try to answer that. How many days of garbage do you think that is right there? One day, it's three days worth of garbage. Let me see someone put in. One, okay. 
Um, yes, three days worth of garbage. So it's just, it's a lot of garbage being produced in our county. And so really trying to focus on reducing the amount that we produce. Another way to look at this would be through plastic beverage containers in the United States. Another question, how many plastic beverage containers do we use in the United States every five minutes? You can type it in the chat or open up your microphone. Two. So it's two million. Two million plastic beverage containers are used every five minutes in the United States. And that's a really, really big number, kind of hard to comprehend. Um, but American artist Chris Jordan actually portrayed this in a series he did called Running the Numbers. And so we're going to take a look at that right now. So we're going to, we're zoomed in right now, we're going to zoom out to what five minutes worth looks like. So that's five minutes just in, in the United States. And first I'm going to say that's, that these are not all getting recycled first off. Um, and even if they are, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to be recycled into another plastic water bottle or beverage bottle. A lot of plastic beverage containers are turned or downcycled into clothing, carpets, and other textiles, which are then sometimes harder to recycle again. And a lot of materials uh, can only re be recycled a handful of times because the quality becomes so low that they can't keep doing it endlessly. And a good way to think about this is through a simple diagram. You have a linear economy, which takes things and just when you're done with it, you put it in the garbage. A recycling economy tries to reuse it a few times, but it eventually will go in the garbage for most items. And then a circular economy is trying to focus on processes or items that can be reused over and over and over again. So your landfill is um, very minimal. And why is this important? Well, sea turtles and everything else. So over time, plastic production and other uh, consumeristic habits have just caused a lot of issues uh, around our planet. So one thing would be the amount of um, plastic and other items ending up in our wildlife and our oceans. So on the left-hand side, you can see a plastic bag. On the right-hand side is a jellyfish. Sea turtles' favorite snack is the jellyfish, and so when they come across this, it can be very difficult for them to see the difference. It's even difficult for us as humans to see the difference. And research is now finding out that a lot of these plastics have similar smells um, as what the food source would actually smell like, which is really interesting. So not only are the plastic bags and other items in the same place the sea turtle would find food, it looks like it and sometimes can also smell like it. And this is the same thing with a lot of other um, wildlife as well. There's a lot of ingesting that's happening uh, throughout. So here's a few pictures just around the globe of litter and plastic and pollution kind of taking over beaches, um, entangling wildlife. In the bottom left hand corner is a diver right here. And this is off the coast, the coast of Belize. So it is really a global issue uh, that we're all trying to fight and every time we decide to reduce the amount of garbage we're producing, we're helping contribute to fight against this. Bottom right hand corner is a picture of um, everything that came out of a sea turtle's stomach. So they're finding a lot of wildlife, especially around the sea, fish, birds, turtles, um, they're ingesting a lot of plastic. And so this is something we need to fight against for their own sake and also for the sake of our well-being as humans. 
So act every action does count. Um, people will say it's only one straw, it's only one disposable cup, it's just one plastic bag. But there's eight billion of us. And so, you know, we can make small sacrifices, but they do have a really big impact. And throwaway living, how did we get here? So this is a um, advertisement out of a 1955 magazine. And it's advertising disposable items cut down on household chores. Now, although they do cut down on household yeah. chores, they do, um, they've created a global chore for us to clean up. And how did humans live before this throwaway culture began? We reused things. Glasses, forks, and dishes, oh my, you know, we don't always have to pick the disposable option because things aren't really meant to be disposed of. So trying to focus to put more value back into the materials that we own and reuse them over and over again. And if you think, oh, well, I'm saving water because I don't have to wash my dishes. Well, just one paper plate takes eight gallons of water to make. So, <laughs> you know, you can clean an entire load of dishes for, I think, two to three gallons of water with your energy efficient and water efficient um, appliances. So it's not the best option to pick those disposables for waste or for water. And this is a really great um, statement that kind of sums it up. I don't know who wrote this. I would love to give them credit, but I don't know who wrote it. If you do, let me know. It says, it's pretty amazing that our society uh -huh. has reached a point where the efforts necessary to extract oil from the ground, ship it to a refinery, turn it into plastic, shape it appropriately, truck it to a store, buy it and bring it home is considered to be less effort than what it takes to just wash the spoon when you're done with it. So just that idea of we need to reuse and reduce what we are um, using in life. And shopping smart. So trying to avoid things that are over packaged, such as this piece of broccoli and some other items you might see in the grocery aisle. And when you do find loose items that you can buy, that are not packaged in plastic, instead of reaching for the plastic produce bag, try to find something that you could reuse or maybe use that plastic bag a few times before you get rid of it. Other ways to shop smart is making a meal plan, trying to buy local, use reusable uh, grocery bags and produce bags. And then I've linked two different article blog posts through the city of 50 ways to live more sustainably and 55 ways to reduce kitchen waste. So you'll be able to check those out. Now around the holidays, um, I think in January, we can end up feeling like it's too much stuff. We've just gone through Christmas and we've got lots of stuff in our homes. So trying to be proactive instead of buying a bunch of un unnecessary things, thinking about trying to shop um, a little bit more intentionally and possibly giving experiences instead of gifts. You know, cooking classes, a movie night, gift cards, donations to a special cause. Right now, I know that can be difficult because we are in COVID and quarantine mode, uh, but may maybe making homemade gift certificates of, I'll do the dishes for a week without complaining or, <laughs> you know, other fun things that you could do. Um, just different ways to think about the holidays in a different way. Maybe it's decorating more naturally. Uh, we did the oranges, you know, when you bake the oranges and you hang them on the tree. We did that this year. It looks really cute. They got a little burnt. But that's okay. We still hung them up. Um, maybe instead of getting a Christmas tree, you use some potted plants that you already have around the house and decorate those. Or maybe it's just decorating with items that you can either eat or compost later. And we do this because we want to protect the place we live. We want to protect Dunedin and we want to protect our whole world from, you know, being over one run with stuff and plastic. And we also want to protect our wildlife and just our different ecosystems. So I've listed lots of resources for you to check out once I post this on our webpage. 
Uh, Pinellas County has a great STEAM program where they talk about how to reduce waste and different citizen scientist activities that you can do at home with your kids. We have a page on our government site called Dunedin uh, Green Steam, and we've got lots of information. Again, the reducing kitchen waste. We talk about the seven R's of sustainability, lots of information. And then we also have a solid waste page where you can go and watch videos on how to recycle right, uh, and then do that interactive recycle room by room, which I went through earlier. Here's some links and happy to open it up for any questions. You can either do the chat or uh, open up your mic. Happy to answer any questions you have. Oh, did I just open up the mic? Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure. Um, well, first of all, thank you, Natalie. Um, that was a great presentation. And I believe I've called you a couple of times so I can stay up to date on recycling. And you've always been really, really helpful. And I appreciate it because this is shocking every time I see it. But um, I have a question and a comment. I'm still always confused by the fact that I put out a lot of the um, lawn stuff and branches and whatever, and it ends up just going into the regular trash. Is that what's supposed to happen? And I don't have it in plastic bags. I just have it in a bin. But it doesn't go into where I think it would go, I guess, to turn into mulch. So we have three different crews. Do you live in a single family home in Dunedin? Yes. Okay. So you, we have three different crews. One picks up your green garbage can. Right. They have that sidearm, which lifts it up into the truck, tips it over. We have a crew that comes by and they do the blue recycling. That's through a contracted hauler. And that's what's being taken down to Sarasota. So it's a different route. We have a third crew with a third different truck. And it's the guys that kind of hang off the back of the truck, the rear load crew. So they'll pick up things and dump it into the back of the truck. That truck goes to an aggregate recycling facility. So your yard debris, uh, furniture, and they pick apart what they can. Oh, okay. Maybe my mistake is I may have seen like a neighbor who had the yard debris in plastic bags. So if it's in a plastic bag, then they can't take it. They have to... No, they can take it. So all yard debris, whether it's in um, your personal container if it's in a plastic bag, a brown bag, or if it's just bundled, all of it's going into that rear load crew, and that's going all to the aggregate recycling facility. The only thing going to the burn plant or to the incinerator, the landfill, is anything in your green garbage bin. Okay, maybe I just saw it. I was maybe I was confused. And by the way, I recommend doing the tour of the solid waste facility, which I guess they're not doing now, but it's phenomenal. It's really, really good. That's down at the county. Yeah, it's great. Oh, it's fabulous. It's so good. The, and then the only comment I have is that the UPS store in Dunedin will take those packing materials Okay. like the popcorn and the bubble wrap. And I actually asked them about COVID cross-contamination and they didn't seem to be concerned because I guess we're kind of realizing after time, it doesn't really, it isn't a concern. But yeah, I bring stuff there all the time and they take it and they're very grateful for it too. So it is basically, they will repurpose it. That's wonderful. I'll talk to them and see if we could you know, put something on our website just to say like, this is a drop off location for that type of material. Yeah, it's the one in, on CR1 um, Granada Plaza. They definitely right. take it. I was just there the other day. So, and that's all I have. And think, I think everybody knows Publix takes the styrofoam and the plastic bags and all of that. Okay, well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for that great information. I appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, let's see what we have in here. Uh, with all of the carryout meals now, is there any industry movement to make packaging more sustainable? Anything we can do to make this less wasteful? Yeah, so I think before COVID, there was a growing movement in trying to bring your own reusable mug or just any type of reusables to a market or to a restaurant. 
And because of COVID, they're really trying to fight against that. Um, there is locally a program called, oh, I'm blanking on it right now, Ocean Friendly Certification. Um, it's a local program out of Clearwater. And so there's a few restaurants in Dunedin that are certified ocean friendly. So you can't have any styrofoam packaging, you can't have any like plastic bags, and they're focusing more on compostable products. Um, now, the side note with that is we don't yet have any commercial composting program in our area. So if you ever talk to the county, that's something we you know, want to keep pushing forward towards is a composting facility. A lot of different compostable products don't necessarily um, compost in a home composting program. They need to have that really high heat intensity in a commercial facility where they will break down. But um, we're slowly seeing a movement towards that, which is really exciting. So if you do see a restaurant in our area and they are making those decisions to not use styrofoam or plastic, you know, congratulate them or give them a good review. Let them know that it is something that's important to you and you want to continue to see. Um, and hopefully we're going to keep moving in that direction. Um, let me see for the chat. Yes, Scone Age, someone posted Scone Age is 100% recyclable products. They do also the compostable products and they just got an award through the city of Dunedin's um, Committee on Environmental Quality for that, which was really exciting. Someone posted, uh, where do we take house paint to? So any paint, chemicals, or electronics do, goes to the county's hazardous program. Again, they are open in St. Petersburg, Monday through Saturday, or you can take them to uh, their once a month drop off in Clearwater. And the next event is Saturday the 19th of December. And you can get all their information. Um, I'll put their phone number in the chat as well. County. Another thing um, I want to mention in terms of compostable items, biodegradable items, there's, with biodegradable, that term is also not really regulated. And, you know, they've found things that are not actually biodegradable being marketed as biodegradable because, sure, maybe it might degrade over 100 million years. <laughs> you know, like there's no industry standards right now. And so they've found like latex balloons being marked as biodegradable because technically they will degrade over billions of years. But um, right now, certified compostable is what you wanna look for if you're trying to move in that direction or encourage it to a business because there are specific standards for certified compostable that they will degrade um, with no harm to the environment in a certain number of days. So that's something we need to work towards is our regulations on these terms. It's called greenwashing instead of brainwashing. It's greenwashing and so as the sustainable movement continues to grow, companies will try to use these buzzwords to sell their products. And right now with a lot of, uh, product, with a lot of terms not having enough regulation on them, it can become very confusing for consumers. Oh, this says it's green. It says it's sustainable. I'll buy it. Doesn't necessarily mean it is green and sustainable. Any other questions? Happy to answer. It could be about anything sustainable, recycling, reducing. I will say right now we are in the writing process of writing our first sustainability master plan for the city and we are looking for community input. So email me um, any comments, questions, ideas you have, and I'm happy to continue to grab all of that community input during our writing process. Put my email in the chat as well. And again, if you go on the Dunedin Green scene under resources, I will post the webinar 
that we just had today and then a link to all the slides that we went over with the links. Well, thank you all for joining. And if you have questions down the road, call me, email me. I'm happy to chat whenever. Thank you. Bye, everyone.